Welcome first graders. My name is Kelsey Lowenberg and I'm a first grade teacher at Sandy Hill Primary School. Hi friends, I miss you. I'm really excited to be joining you all today because we're going to be reading, talking, and writing about our story, Cook Up a Surprise. Cook Up a Surprise might sound familiar to some of you. If you joined in last week with Mrs. Johnson, you read the story. We're going to be reading it again today. Remember, Good readers always go back and reread. There might be some more details or clues that you missed. We're gonna be doing a different writing activity this week. We're gonna be writing our opinion piece. Before we get started, let's take a look at this next page. Last week, you all talked about solving a mystery. We're gonna be solving a mystery again today. Have you ever solved a mystery? Someone who solves a mystery might be called a detective or a sleuth. A sleuth can also mean a bloodhound. A bloodhound is a type of dog that helps detectives or other people use to track clues. Today, you're gonna to be sleuth hounds. That's a made up compound word. We can work as a team today. I can be a super sleuth and you can be a junior sleuth hound. We're gonna be reading and pulling out more clues or details from the text. Let's take a look at this letter on the screen. Read along with me. Dear Junior Sleuth Hound, mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do to solve a mystery? You become a sleuth hound. Look for clues, ask interesting questions, then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. This sounds like a lot of fun. I love solving mysteries. Take a look at some of these pictures or items or tools that you see on this page. Do you think that you would use any of these tools to help you solve a mystery? I encourage you to pick one and talk about it with someone in your house and how could you use it to solve a mystery? Can you share with me? That's a good idea. One tool I might use is this pencil. A pencil is a great tool. You could also use a marker or a crayon if you don't have a pencil. A pencil could help you write down all of the clues or details that you find when you're trying to solve a mystery. Let's take a look at these super sleuth steps. It's a tongue twister. The first one says, look for clues. We're looking for clues as we're reading all the time. We're pulling out clues, or we call them details sometimes in class. When you're reading, you're always looking for clues or details to help you understand. That leads me to ask questions. Your teacher probably always tells you it's important to ask questions as you're reading. When you're asking yourself questions, you're making sure that you understand what you're reading, or if you might need to go back and reread it again. The next one is make your case. When you make your case, you uh, might be pulling out the topic sentence or forming your own opinion. Then you have to prove it. When you prove it, you're showing what you've learned and you're using evidence from the text that you can share with someone else. We'll be using all of these steps as we're reading today. Let's think about our big unit question. We're, we've been talking all about treasures, if you remember. What do we treasure? Let's think about that word treasure. What is a treasure? When I think of the word treasure, I think of something that is special to us. It might be a person, a picture, a toy, or a memory. Can you think of what else might be a treasure? This week, we're talking about how can a surprise be a treasure? Have you ever been surprised? 
why might you consider that to be a treasure? We're going to be talking more about that today. So as we're reading today, I want you to think about our purpose for reading. So we're going to be reading our story, Cook Up a Surprise. Some of you might have read it last week with Miss Johnson, like I said. But remember, good readers always go back and reread to pull out more details or clues that you might have missed the first time. As we're reading today, I want you to think about the gift that the students give Miss Carter. As you're reading, pull out details or clues to help you figure out if it's a good gift. Some of you might have already written down some of those ideas from last week. If you have, you can use them to help form your opinion writing today. After we're finished reading today, we're gonna to write an opinion piece and look at an example. So as we're reading today, we're pulling out clues and details, and we're gonna form our opinion on whether we think that Amy's mom's idea for a present was a good idea. So as we're reading, keep that in mind as you're pulling out clues and details as you're reading. Let's take a look at our story. Cook up a surprise. I invite you all to read along with me and pull out details or clues to help you in your opinion writing. Remember to be thinking about, a, about the gift and whether or not you think it's a good gift for their teacher, Miss Carter. I'm gonna begin reading right now. I encourage you to follow along. The title of our story is Cook Up a Surprise. Mom, said Amy, next week is Mrs. Carter's birthday. She likes flowers, dogs, and cooking. Hmm, those are giving you some clues as to what they might be giving her as a present. What surprise can our class make? There's that word surprise. How can a surprise be a treasure? Let's keep reading. Mom had the best idea. The next day, Amy told everyone, that's a great idea, they said. So I'm gonna pause right here and let's think about what our purpose for learning was. We were talking about whether we thought it was a good idea or not. We don't know what Amy's mom's idea was yet, but we do know that her classmates agreed that it was a good idea. Let's keep reading and pull out some more details. The next Tuesday was Mrs. Carter's birthday. After lunch, Amy raised her hand. Then the whole class said, happy birthday, Miss Carter. Louise handed Miss Carter a big book. On the front was a drawing by Jane. It showed a colorful fruit salad. The title of the book was Our Best Recipes. That title gives us a clue as to what they might have given Miss Carter as a gift. Let's keep reading. Miss Carter opened the book. She saw a recipe on each page. There were recipes for many things. The children had gotten their recipes from their parents. The recipes were for their favorite foods. They had put them in a book and drawn pictures. At this point, you all know what the surprise was, what gift they chose to give to Miss Carter. I want you to pause right now and think about whether you think that that was a good gift or not. Let's finish reading. This is a wonderful surprise, said Miss Carter. I'll treasure it forever. Hmm. Those are some really important details in that last sentence. Miss uh, Carter said that she will treasure it forever. That gives us details that she might have enjoyed that present. If you want to go back and reread, I encourage you to pause right now and go back and reread this on your own. Let's keep going. So I told you that um, as we were reading today, I asked you to think about the gift and pull out details to help you explain whether you thought that Amy's mom's idea was a good idea or not. I told you that we were gonna be writing our opinion piece. Before we get started writing our opinion, I wanna go through the four, the four key features that you need in an opinion writing. In your classroom, you might use the term Oreo. Now, when we say Oreo in class, we're not thinking about these cookies that you see on your screen. 
The term Oreo helps us to remember what or features we need when we're writing our opinion piece. We're gonna go through and we're gonna review what those four features are. The first one is O, opinion. Opinion is you clearly state your opinion about the topic. So our topic today was whether or not you thought that Amy's mom's idea of giving their teacher, Miss Carter, a cookbook was a good idea or not. I'm gonna, I want you to think right now whether you thought it was a good idea or whether you thought it was not a good idea. Let's keep going. The next one is R, reason, supports your opinion. So you can't just say your opinion without giving a reason. So you have to give a reason as to why you think something. So if I say, I think that the gift that they gave to Miss Carter was a good idea, I have to give a reason why I think it's a good idea. Here later on, we're gonna look at an example. The next one is E. E stands for explanation. When you're giving your explanation, you're using evidence from the text. That's something we do all the time in our classroom. We're always pulling out evidence or details or clues in our text to help us support our answer. So when you're giving your opinion, you have to give a reason, and then you have to pull out some of those details that you read in the story to help support your opinion. The last one is O again. So you're going to restate or say your opinion again to close your writing. Using what we've learned and what we know about opinion writing, I invite you to form your own opinion writing about Mrs. Carter's gift. Let's take a look at this next page to reread our question. Do you think that Amy's mom's idea for a present was a good idea? Why or why not? Take a minute to think about that. Form your own opinion. Do you think it was a good idea or do you think it was not a good idea? Remember, our Oreo writing, you have to give a reason and an explanation from our story. Take a minute to think about that. All right, friends, I hope you have your own opinion whether you thought it was or was not a good idea for a gift for Miss Carter. Remember, you can use any kind of piece of paper or pencil or crayon to help you with your writing today. It doesn't have to be handwriting paper like we use in school. You can use anything that you have at home. If you want to pause the screen right here and begin your opinion writing using our O-R-E-O, I encourage you to do that now. If you think that you still need some help or some more explanation on how to write an opinion piece, keep watching. I have a writing from a mystery writer that might give you a little bit more details on how to write your opinion piece. Let's take a look. Here's an example of a writing, uh, an opinion piece that answers our question, do you think Amy's mom's idea for a present was a good idea? Why or why not? I encourage you to read along with me as I'm reading our mystery writer's opinion. I think that Amy's mom's idea to make a cookbook for their teacher was a good idea because Miss Carter loves to cook. Amy and all of her classmates worked together and shared their favorite recipes to make the cookbook. In the story, Miss Carter says that the Miss Carter says that the surprise is wonderful and that it is something that she will treasure. This is why I think making a cookbook for Miss Carter was a good idea. Now here's an example of uh, an opinion writing. Now to make sure they have all four key features, let's go back and reread and make sure we can point out and label if they had their opinion, reason, explanation, and restated their opinion again. If we take a look at this first sentence, it says, I think that Amy's mom's idea to make a cookbook for their teacher was a good idea because Miss Carter loves to cook. In this sentence, the writer gives their opinion and a reason why they think that. So they started off on the right track. They gave their opinion. Let's make sure that the next one is R is reason. Let's make sure they have that. In the next sentence, it says, Amy and all of her classmates worked together 
and shared their favorite recipes to make their cook to make the cookbook. They gave another reason as to why they thought it was a good idea. So the writer really thinks that giving the cookbook was a good idea for their teacher. So they have the O, the R, the next, the next thing, thing that they need is E. Remember, E is explanation. Let's see if they have that. In the next sentence, it says, in the story, Miss Carter says that the surprise is wonderful and that it is something she will treasure. Remember, explanation, we were giving evidence from the text. So in this sentence, this, the author, or the, I'm sorry, the writer says that they found this information in the story. I remember reading that the last sentence. I said that was a really important sentence because Miss Carter says that it was something that she was going to treasure forever. So they have the O, the R, the E. The last thing they need is their opinion, their closure. Let's make sure they have that. If you take a look right here, it says, this is why I think making a cookbook for Miss Carter was a good idea. So they restated their opinion again. They said it was a good idea. Friends, I challenge you to go back and check your writing. If you haven't had a chance to write your opinion piece, I encourage you to pause the screen right now and do that. If you have had a chance to write your opinion, I encourage you to go back and use our Oreo um, to check to make sure you have all four key features in your writing. You might want to use a pencil to underline or circle, or maybe you have a highlighter or a crayon. I encourage you to go through each of your sentences and label to make sure you have your opinion, you give a reason, an explanation, and you restate your opinion. If you forgot any of these as you're going back and checking your work, that's okay. Just add it in. Friends, I had so much fun learning with you today. I have one additional activity that you might want to do. In our story, it says that Miss Carter likes flowers as well as dogs and cooking. I chose flowers because it might be something that you all have learned about in science in your class. You might have talked about different types of flowers or plants. I encourage you to draw a picture of a flower or a plant that you might see outside. Try labeling the different parts of the flower and explain how they help the flower to survive. If you take a look at the screen, I inserted a picture from our science books. You could talk about the picture that you see on the screen and use the words that I have in the word bank to label. The words I have are stem, roots, leaves, and flower. I really enjoyed learning with you all today. I hope you guys join back next week and see what other story we have for you. Bye friends.